Throughout the Cold War, Finland and Sweden remained outside of NATO, establishing a neutral stance. However, recent events, including Russia's annexation of Crimea, ongoing invasion of Ukraine, and routine violations of airspace by Russian forces, have pushed non-aligned countries to reevaluate their security policies and consider joining NATO. In a significant policy shift for the Nordic countries, Finland and Sweden have considered applying for NATO membership despite Russia's vehement warning of military escalation, including the possible deployment of nuclear weapons in the Baltic region. Even if Russia advances from the ongoing conflict with the capacity to launch further invasions on its neighbors, which is unlikely, given the scale of war casualties and losses it has suffered, Finland and Sweden will benefit from NATO membership. Article 5 of the NATO Treaty guarantees that an attack on one NATO ally is an attack on all NATO allies. Meanwhile, the addition of Finland and Sweden to the alliance will strengthen it militarily and geographically. In a crisis, assured access to Finnish and Swedish territory would allay NATO's worries about bolstering the Baltic states and reduce the likelihood of a successful Russian attack, which will ultimately translate as a loss for Vladimir Putin. Russia's position in northeastern Europe will be severely weakened, which is a positive development for European security. To be fair, membership in NATO has caused divisions in the past, with certain groups of people unsure whether or not to join, though an increasing number of people in both countries are warming to the idea now. In mid-April, Polls conducted by the polling firm Novus revealed that 51% of Swedes support joining the Western Military Alliance, the first time the decision had been supported by the majority. Contrary to this, polls from Novus back in April 2014, a month after Russia annexed Ukraine's eastern Crimea region, found that 36% of Swedes were opposed to Sweden joining NATO. Statistics, however, have depicted an evolution in Sweden's attitude toward applying for NATO membership over time, with only 25% of Swedes believing the country should not join NATO in May, just two months after Russia invaded Ukraine, and 48% believing it should. Sweden's Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson and her Finnish counterpart Sanna Marin met with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Berlin, while Sweden's Foreign Minister Anne Lind was dispatched to the United States and Canada. Respective leaders reaffirmed their support for Finland and Sweden, as well as their NATO candidacies at each meeting, with the Swedish Foreign Minister affirming that she received even more assurances after meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Washington. As the week progressed, such assurances, while informal, were repeated across the NATO alliance. As a matter of fact, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said the alliance would deploy more troops in and around Sweden if the nation requested. On a visit to Finland, UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace said it was inconceivable that his country would not support Finland or Sweden if they were ever attacked. All of this represents the rapid transition of several countries to increasing defense spending and strengthening existing alliances, reflected in the attitudes of Sweden and Finland, two of Europe's longtime NATO dissenters, quickly shifting toward membership to counter Russia's destabilizing war in Ukraine that is appending decades of European military policy. Finland's leaders recently stated that they support applying for NATO membership as quickly as possible, laying the groundwork for a historic expansion of the alliance, potentially dealing a severe blow to Russia as its military struggles in Ukraine. The Nordic country in Northern Europe is almost certain to join the Western military alliance, according to President Sauli Niinisto and Prime Minister Sanna Marin's announcement, though a few steps remain before the application process can begin. Finland made the announcement a day after British Prime Minister Boris Johnson visited Finland and Sweden to sign a military cooperation agreement, where the United Kingdom promised to help Sweden and Finland if the two Nordic countries were attacked. Nianisto, speaking at a joint press conference with Johnson in Helsinki this week, said Moscow could only blame itself if his 5.5 million strong country joined NATO.
Sweden's ruling Social Democrats, on the other hand, have stated that a decision on NATO membership could be reached as early as mid-May. On May 15th, a special session will be held in which leading members of Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson's party will discuss NATO and other issues. Prior to the Ukraine conflict, the Social Democrats were opposed to Ukraine joining NATO and emphasized the benefits of neutrality. However, with the changing security landscape in Europe, several Swedish parties are now advocating for NATO membership, putting Andersson's party under tremendous pressure. Some evidence suggests that membership for Finland or Sweden will open the doorway for the other Nordic countries, following in the steps of Denmark, Iceland, and Norway, who are all founding NATO members. Growing concerns for the prospective NATO members is that there may be an unsafe gray period following application before full membership takes effect, hence are likely to apply the option of requesting security guarantees to protect them from Russian aggression. Russia has been conspicuous with its dislike for the brewing alliance and has issued a stern warning in response to the development, suggesting that Finland joining NATO would inflict serious damage to Russian-Finnish relations, as well as stability and security in Northern Europe, as per the Russian Foreign Ministry. Continuing that Russia will be forced to take retaliatory steps of military, technical, and other characteristics in order to counter the emerging threats to its national security whilst concluding that history will determine why Finland needed to turn its territory into a bulwark of the military face-off with Russia while losing independence in making its own decisions. Prior to the ministry's announcement, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov stated that Finland's decision would be detrimental to European stability and security, with Russia's response, according to Peskov, to be determined by NATO's bid to expand its facilities closer to Russian borders. Out of the 27 members of the European Union, Finland has the longest border with Russia, and so, these threats haven't been taken lightly. The Kremlin had previously warned of military and political consequences if Sweden and Finland decided to join NATO. Now, should they decide to join the alliance, there will be a period of transition between when their applications are submitted and when all 30 existing member nations' legislatures ratify them. According to Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kallis, history is being made by their northern neighbors, whose country shares a border with Russia. She pledged to assist Finland in joining NATO as soon as possible, while Swedish Foreign Minister Anne Lind said Finland's announcement sent an important message. Perhaps this is the turning point but only time will tell how the story unfolds. If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen, which looks into how Putin's invasion of Ukraine is changing the world forever. As always, give our video a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting future videos.